here's the example that I'm asking us to look at. Now, because I've just shown you 10 minutes ago the three broad ways of approaching inequality proof like this, this kind of sticks out like a sore thumb, right? What can you do with this? I'm going to need to differentiate. Uh, it's not, I should point out, it's not immediately obvious just yet that I need to, um, like, inter differentiation and not intervention is the way to go, but you'll start to get a bit of a feel for like, oh, it, it, this is much more, much easier to work with versus this, okay? Just as a general rule, go, go towards differentiation. Integration, there's probably going to be a number that appears because you evaluate some kind of definite integral, like a pi appears somewhere like that, which comes from doing, you know, some trig function or whatever. But here, you just got the functions themselves, and then you get given a domain restriction, okay? So, the easiest way to think about this is to say, well, don't think about this thing and this thing as separate things. Think of them as something together and understand how that's working. So what I'm gonna introduce is, consider a new function, okay? And the function I'm worrying about is just what happens when you combine these two together? X take away X squared take away this guy, okay? Now pause for a moment, before you embark on actually doing any calculus, where are we headed? If this is my function, what do I want to be true about the function if the original inequality is true? Okay, good, because I've just subtracted this from both sides, right? So essentially what I'm aiming towards is x take away x squared take away log 1 plus x. I want that to be negative, so therefore I'm going to use calculus to get there, okay? So let's just do the easy thing, let's differentiate this. Can you read it off for me? 1 minus 2x minus 1 log plus x. Ooh, hold on. Is that right? Uh, oh, sorry, I need to add an extra thing. Oh, that's fine. It's okay. Otherwise it won't work. <laughs> Be for a different domain. Um, take away, what was this on the end? Uh, one, 1 and 1 plus x. Good. I'll just simplify this a little bit. Okay, now if what I want to do is show that, yeah, this thing is going to be a decreasing function going down from some point, then I need to be able to say something about this as a whole piece, but it's all kind of in, in separate bits at the moment. Yeah. So it shouldn't be minus 1, 1, 1 plus uh, Oh, sorry, that one there? Yep. Okay, yep, good. So in order to understand the behavior of this derivative, I've got to stop it being like a, a pile of things that are unrelated to each other. I need to put this thing together, okay? So what would you like me to do to combine these into one? Yeah, How about a common denominator? common denominator? So for example, this I can view as one thing. I can put it over one plus x. When I multiply the top and bottom by one plus x, I'm going to get one take away x squared, right? And then there's a minus one. Are you happy with what I did? I break it. That's okay. I get a tiny bit of simplifying there. Okay, so this is f dash. This is my derivative. Okay. Now, call to mind all the things you know about um, about functions, about sides, about inequalities, that kind of thing. The first thing you know is, hey, look at this guy up here. I'm in I'm in real land, right? I can say therefore negative x squared is going to be less than or equal to zero. Do you agree with that? In fact, I can go one better than that. Can't I go one better? It's not equal. Yeah, that's right. I actually can't get to the border, can I? Right? Because I'm going to do that thing again. x squared is equal to zero if and only if x itself is zero, right? But I know that's not the case because it's a, it's a positive number, right? So zero is being excluded. Okay? So that's good. That's the numerator. What about the denominator? What can you tell me about that? It's always positive, right? Because you start from a positive number and you add something to it, so it stays positive. Therefore, what you've got here is the, um, it's the quotient, which is the same as the product, of a negative number and a positive number. So therefore, f dash x is less than, zero. less than zero for all the values in the domain. It's worth pointing out, it's not always less than zero, right? Can someone give me a value for which this thing is actually positive? Yeah, uh, if you have a look at this, right, have a look at the function, okay, uh, where does this exist? Well, this is all real values, this is all real values, but this guy, where's he? Um, less than zero. Yeah, <coughs> that's right. So he's, he's, he actually has different values that he's okay for. So I need this restriction that they gave me at the beginning. Okay, all fine. So now what am I going to do with this? I know it's a decreasing function, but so what? 
which is still widening the restriction. I've established it's decreasing, but so what? Remember where I'm going? Remember where I'm going? I want to show, using this derivative, that this thing's always going to be negative, right? That's what connects me back to the original question, okay? So I already know it's decreasing, but that doesn't tell me it's always negative, right? Okay, so I have to know, okay, it's decreasing, but if it starts at like 100, and then it decreases, well, it's got a whole bunch of values for which it's still positive, right? I need to start at a particular place, right? So where does it begin? Where does this function start? At f0, right? Because remember, decreasing is going from left to right, left to right. I know that I've got positive values. So this is like the beginning. I actually don't even need this particular value. I just need everything after it, okay? So what is f of 0? Well, let's just have a look. So I've got 0 take away 0 squared on 2. So that's 0 take away 0. Take away log of 1, which is also 0. Okay? So now I have established the function starts at 0, and then he just starts dropping. I don't care how slowly or quickly he drops. I just want to know that he does. Okay? Uh, it's never even, there are no stationary points either. Do you notice that? So it has to be coming down. So therefore, here's the way I worded it. Right? Uh, and this wording you probably want to pay attention to. f of x is decreasing to all values of x in the domain. That's important. But it's not just decreasing. It's decreasing for all values of x in the domain starting from this value that we just determined. All right, so if you start from 0 and you drop down, right, that means you're always going to be negative. Because if you just started at 1 and drop down, there will be some values you're positive. Okay? So therefore, f of x is less than 0. So what was it? x take away x squared on 2 take away? Ln 1. Log of 1 plus x is less than 0. So then I just have to add to both sides. 